I caught my ex-wife cheating in a Walgreens. Hey, true story, can you imagine discovering that your wife of many years had been recently having an affair? I caught the jokers out shopping. My ex-wife was surprised and couldn't say a word. Her soft affair partner said, Isn't that your husband? He confirmed that he knew about me. I just left and went home with divorce in mind. My now ex-wife, L and I were married for a total of eight years. Mine as well say eight. The seven-year itch is a real thing, and in our sixth and seventh year of marriage, we both were looking towards divorce. At the time, she'd claim I was more invested into my career and not giving her enough time. That was the sixth year. We went to counseling, and of course, I was the bad guy, so I needed to pay attention to my ex-wife more, etc. Things got better and seemed okay. She stopped complaining, and I thought I was doing the right thing. Then in our seventh year, she claimed I gave way too much attention to our daughter and completely ignored her. If I'd help my daughter with homework, Elle would get extremely upset. It was so weird. This woman was jealous of her own baby. Yes, guys, this wasn't her stepdaughter. This isn't just my daughter. And for the record, yes, I did DNA test my kid. She is mine. I didn't need to do so. I knew she was mine, but I know you guys are probably going to ask that question. But this is my wife's daughter, and she's jealous of her saying, I give her way too much attention. I spoil her, which is not true. I make my daughter earn everything. My daughter says she wants a new bike. She wants new roller skates. Guess what I say? I want straight A's on your report card. Nothing less than a B plus. On your next spelling test, I want you to get a 100. My daughter does those things. She cleans up after herself, cleans the room, cleans out the bathtub, picks up her toys. She does all of it. She even helps put dishes in the dishwasher. My daughter is a good girl, but my ex-wife seems to dislike her in some way, which explains why she's living with me now. Naturally, my daughter did want to stay with her mother when our divorce was going on, but my daughter quickly realized that her mother truly didn't like her, and she became okay with just living with me, and she still misses her mom. She talks about her all the time, wishes that her mother loved her more, like other mothers, her friends' mothers. My wife chose to be with the simp AP that she found. The crazy thing to me is that my ex-wife was actually confused during our divorce process. There was one point where she came to me and said, maybe we can work this out, at least for our daughter. I don't understand why or how her mind just goes from wanting to cheat and wanting to leave to then wanting to save the marriage. It happened also during the sixth year of marriage. She just goes back and forth like she's so confused. I don't know what's good for me, she'd say. She's even told me. I felt like I made a big mistake with getting married. Nothing wrong with you. It's just I don't know if I was ready, guys. I should have been divorced, my wife, the second I heard that. I should have been out. Yeah, we were years in and had a daughter, but still, I should have been gone. So during the seventh year of marriage, she's doing all this complaining. I'm not giving her attention. This is what we went through the first time. It's like, I don't care. I work too much. By the way, I paid all the bills and guys. Yes, she did work a part-time job. Her money was basically her money. Yeah, she'd buy me things here and there, or we'll be out sometime. Hey, dinner's on me, I think. Oh, thank God, because I've been spending all my money on everything. She did use her money to pay for our daughter's extracurricular activities, like sports, and she was part of the chess team and learning instruments, so she'd pay things like that, just little things, but mainly I paid the mortgage. I paid all the utilities I paid for upkeep on the cars, gas in the cars, everything, every major bill I paid it. But she'd complain saying I work too much. Why do I work these extra hours when I don't have to? Actually, I did have to. So I ended up becoming manager, project manager at my job. 
I was responsible for a lot of projects. These projects had deadlines after a holiday. I wouldn't want to go into work. A lot of people would call off. Sometimes I'd have to go in. I'd have to get things done. My job was on the line. If I missed a deadline, there goes my job. There goes our house. There goes our car payments. There goes all that stuff she didn't think about. She didn't think, well, since I have so much free time, maybe I should drive up to my husband's job and have lunch with him. Maybe I should bring him lunch. True story. You think she ever packed me lunch? One time she did bring me lunch and I told her how that made me feel. How convenient it was because when she's not working, like I said, she works part time. She's just out at the mall. She's shopping somewhere. She's doing her own little thing of uh, getting a mani-pedi while I'm at work busting my butt. She complained and cried saying she wanted more time with me. I threw it out there saying, just come to my job at lunch. We literally live 11 minutes from my job. Come to my job, bring me lunch, and we'd have lunch together one whole hour together outside summer day, something. She didn't want to do it. She even asked for an allowance so she could buy me lunch and told me I needed to make more of an effort. So when I came home from work, I needed to take her out and take her here and there when I'm freaking exhausted. Yes, guys, I work a desk job and sometimes I'd have to go to job sites. But still, I'm tired mentally. I'm just broken down. I stayed strong for my family because I knew what I was doing for my family. But the fact that she would complain about stuff and deny me sex just ticked me off. I'd come home tired and we'd go to bed together. But sometimes I'd wake up two in the morning. Of course, I'm going to roll over and try to get it in with my wife. She's like, no, she doesn't have anything to do in the morning. She doesn't have to go to work. The day she did work, she'd work from like 12 to 5, and it was a little sales job at the mall. Nothing big. Just some extra cash for her to have because apparently I wasn't working hard enough to give her an allowance on top of paying for everything. So she needed to get a part-time job. But she just tells me no. She'd be up too, wide awake watching something or reading a book saying to me why don't you be more romantic why didn't we go out last night um because i work late and then i have to work again today i tried to be aggressive with her maybe she wants me to be more aggressive and it was still a hard no get off of me but whenever she wanted it do you think i said no i didn't because i wanted it too i was deprived we go weeks without it and she suddenly wants some. And yes, of course, let's go, please, I'd say. I talked to friends and co-workers about this, and they'd say, oh, this is just part of marriage, man. It's going to happen. The bedroom's going to die down for a while, but it'll pick back up, dude. It'll be just like when you were 20 years old. It'll feel great. I don't know, guys. I don't buy that. I think those co-workers were just doing a little wishful thinking hoping that their marriage would turn around because they were in the same situations and they were just repeating something they heard from someone else who was married in a sexless marriage. She'd make excuses saying, oh, our daughter can hear us, not true. She's not going to hear us, and there were plenty of other spots in the house we could have gone to. It was like she was punishing me for having to work part-time and not whining and dining her and all types of bullcrap, dude. When I told her that, she shouldn't be jealous of her daughter and it's a natural thing to want to take care of my child and she should probably join us in doing the homework and projects, science projects and other projects we were doing so we can be a family and she'd refuse. She'd be too busy doing her nails or she's late at the salon because she booked the appointment too late. She'd come home, see me working on a project with my daughter and just roll her eyes. Like, how does she think it made my daughter feel? She didn't care, though. So I told her, yeah, you should do better. It's not me. She threw a fit and told me that I wasn't being a real man. I wasn't being a husband. And this is when I think she started the affair. Now, guys, I don't have proof that she was cheating the whole time for years. 
but from what I just told you, I'm pretty sure everyone in the comments would agree. She's been cheating for a long time, which is why I went to get the DNA test, even though I just knew this was my daughter. She looks exactly like me, but I always know they say do not go off of that because it could be my cousins, my brothers, you know something like that, but I'm 99.9999% the father. I've already proven it. But after that specific incident, the night she came in to the home complaining, when we were working on a project, my daughter and I, I began to notice a bigger change in L, less talking always outside of the house, phone nowhere in sight. Whenever we were together sitting on the couch, maybe a movie was on. Her phone would be gone. She used to always have her phone out, and this is why I kind of questioned. Well, was she cheating before? Because it was a complete change, guys. And whenever we went out to dinner as a family, the very few times we did, if she had her phone, she'd want to leave it in the car or it'll be turned off. There was another time she had her phone face down. I noticed that. She'd never done things like that before. So this is why I'm kind of on the fence when it comes to, well, did she actually cheat before? And has she been cheating? I really think she just started doing it, but who knows. I didn't do any further investigating when I found her cheating on me. It was a wrap. It was time to go. You guys got to understand. I kind of went into survival mode, saving my marriage. Well, okay. I'm working a lot, but I'm paying all the bills. She feels neglected. She wants these things. She's jealous of my daughter. My mind was thinking, how do I fix it now? I know a lot of you will say, oh, I know how to fix it. You divorce her. Yeah, that sounds very cute. It's fun, but guys, this is real life marriage. I swore that I would take care of this woman. When I saw my daughter for the first time, I swore I was going to take care of her. She would, would never need anything. She'll be well equipped when she's 18, things like that. So I went into survival mode. Yes, I felt like I was being a man, but when I saw her cheating on me, it was over. So, of course, after her putting her phone down and hiding her phone and things like that, I started to question her. Hey, I noticed that you are very sneaky with your phone. You know you leave it on silent. You turn away if you're texting or if you get a message or notification. I don't hear it notify you, but I see your phone light up and you turn your phone away from me. So I started questioning her. What's going on? Are you cheating on me? Are you seeing someone? She immediately start telling me, are you projecting? You must be cheating on me, sir. Who in that office are you sleeping with? I saw you all's new intern. Why would you assume that I'm cheating on you? I said, because you're being weird with your phone. All the signs are there. She said, what signs? I said, you putting your phone face down. You hiding your phone. You always keep your phone on you always. For years now, all of a sudden, it's turned on silent mode. All types of weird stuff, guys. She just flipped it on me. Let me see your phone. What's going on with you? I gladly handed her my phone, guys. G started going through my phone for a good five, seven minutes or so, and she threw it back at me. Hmm, whatever. So I said, okay, well, let me see your phone. She just looked at me with this attitude and this face as if she smelled something that stunk. I said, are you just going to stare at me or give me your phone? She started to hand it to me and I was reaching out to grab it and she pulled back and said, why should I do that? What do you want to look at? I said, I want to look at exactly what you looked at. She tells me, you didn't see what I was looking at. So how do you know? So I asked her, what did she look at? She said, not much, just your browser. I said, okay, well, let me see your browser. She says, okay. Only look at the browser because that's what I looked at. I said, this is some weird stuff, so I get the phone. She unlocks it first. I get the phone and I go into the browser. I don't know what I'm looking for. I just go to browser history and it's a bunch of nail stuff. Amazon, blah, blah, blah. And she's staring at me and staring at the phone, making sure I don't look at anything else. Guys, I click off of the browser and I click messages. The second I click it, it didn't even pull up the messages. She snatches the phone and says, see, I knew it. 
You're trying to accuse me of some stuff that I didn't do. Guys, right then and there, right? I said, okay, she's hiding something from me clearly. Obviously, the thing is, guys, I didn't have any hard evidence of this. I said so. It's obvious that something's in those messages that you don't want me to see. She said, oh, no, I had enough. This is so stupid. You want to accuse me of cheating and doing whatever when you have no proof of me doing it. My privacy is my privacy. I talk to my friends here. I talk to my sister, my mother. I don't want you reading those messages. That's between us. I said, okay. I kissed her on the forehead and I said, it's okay. And she cooled down. What I was thinking was, I'm going to see what's in that phone. I'm going to go through all her things, laptop, whatever. And I even hired a private investigator. I'm not sure how many of you guys have ever done something like this. I think I heard a story once or twice where a private investigator was hired. I actually did it, guys. I found one locally. It wasn't hard at all. You guys can literally just Google private investigators and read the reviews. There's tons of people that do it. Some have professional offices and some just work out of their home. So I reached out to a guy that had some pretty good reviews. Told him everything he said to me, typical. I understand. I'll do what I have to do to find out. And I told him where we lived and my wife's schedule and everything, and he went investigating. I told my wife that I needed to take all the laptops and other devices in to be fixed. I made up some dumb excuse and she kind of fell for it, but she needed to use the laptop first. I allowed her to do it, and sure enough, I knew she was deleting things, but I knew this didn't matter because the private investigator told me what to do, and he told me that if she tried to delete anything, it will still pop up. He could recover it easily. I took everything in, including my daughter's laptop, which I didn't want him to check, but I just brought it with me, as if I was trying to get some new spamware put on the computers because we've been breached and my credit card was breached. The wife fell for it. I took it to the private investigator and he did his thing on my wife's laptop. He also at that time had sent me videos of my wife going to restaurants for lunch right before she'd have to go to work. She'd go to taco restaurant. She'd go to just random places, but she was never with anyone. But what the private investigator saw was that every time she went to a restaurant, there was another guy that would pull up either before or after her by himself and going to this restaurant. So when this happens at three different restaurants, guys, what does that tell you? She knows this guy. P.I. never got pictures of her kissing anybody outside the restaurant. They always seemed to leave separately. He'd leave before her or she'd leave before him. It's like they knew what they were doing. You know, like, okay, my husband could be spying on me, so we're not going to kiss outside the restaurant or talk outside the restaurant. But we'd go into the restaurant and be together and then go out separate times. I don't know. I'm thinking for them, but that's just how it played out. So the private investigator told me he thinks that this guy has something to do with my wife. He went through her things and he was actually surprised he could tell that things were deleted, but he could not recover them like he claimed he could. He said he'd never experienced this ever before. He told me that my wife was a professional putting everything together, her going to these restaurants and the same guy being at the same restaurant and them leaving separately, arriving separately, not kissing outside of the store, not meeting up outside of the store and her deleting things on her laptop and he has no way of recovering it. He said my wife is a skilled professional. She knows what she's doing. So we came up with the plan. For some reason, the private investigator I hired, and I didn't know this prior to hiring him, but he was not to go into establishments and record my wife. He could only be outside and do it. I don't know what that's about. I don't know if it's a legal thing, but he said he just can't do that. I don't know if it was morally. I doubt it. Maybe it was legally. So, I had him keep me on standby whenever he knew something. When she showed up somewhere, he was to call me, and that's what he did. I was at work, and I was busy at this time. 
and it was right before lunch around 1045. He calls me and says, hey, your wife is at such and such restaurant, which was literally five minutes away from my job. He tells me she just walked inside and he just saw the same guy pull up. I said, okay, I'll head on over there. On my way there, he tells me that, hey, they just left. I said, what? It was literally two minutes. I told everyone I was taking an early lunch and I ran to my car. I hadn't even gotten out the parking lot yet. He calls me and says, hey, they just left, but they're walking over to a Walgreens. I said, Walgreens, okay. And he said they were together walking side by side. So I head to the Walgreens. The Walgreens was in the same location. It's right next to the restaurant. I get to the Walgreens and I call him. I said, are they still in there? He said, absolutely, they never left out. I get out and I look over and I see P.I. sitting in the car. I wave at him and go inside and I just start walking around. I went and grabbed a water out of the cooler and I look and I see my wife come out and turn to the left. She couldn't see me and the guy right behind her gripping her waist. This man is humping my wife in the store, hands on her waist, and he's thrusting on her butt. So does that tell me she's either had sex with this man before, or the plan was to do so, I don't know. All I know is, if you're allowing another man to do that, you're cheating on me. I start walking in the aisle, and I can see them. They can't see me. This guy grips my dot wife a little tighter. She turns over and they kiss guys. It broke my heart to see that. I was all I needed to see. I walk out of my aisle and go into their aisle, and I say, Elle, what are you doing? She jumps. Elle doesn't say a word. She's just staring at me. Eyes, big deer, and headlights look, and the guy still has his hands on my wife, standing behind her, just looking at me. This piece of crap guy proves that he knows all about me. He says, hey. Isn't that your husband with a freaking smirk on his face? I wanted to jam this guy in the face so freaking bad. I just said to my wife, we're getting a divorce and I walked away. I called the PI and guys, I'm going to admit, I started crying. Yeah, like a little bee. I didn't want to believe that she was cheating on me, but proving it and seeing it. It truly did hurt me. I called the PI and I thanked him. I told him to invoice me whatever else I need to pay him, but he did his job and I thanked him for his help. I eventually did find a lawyer, and during that time of me looking for a lawyer, she would try to save the marriage. She'd go back and forth one minute, we can fix this. We can reconcile this because I never slept with him. I only talked to him because I felt neglected. Yada yada, all types of bullcrap. I wasn't buying it, though, not one time. Guys, I considered reconciliation. My thoughts was, I'm going to have to pay alimony. I'm going to have to pay child support. All types of stuff. I was just scared and terrified, guys, so this is what happened. She was served, divorced during the process of everything. She did try to reconcile a couple times. I kept denying it, kept shutting it down. She eventually said she's happier with her affair partner and they're going to have a life together. She told her lawyer that she did not want our daughter. She wanted me to have our daughter. My daughter was hurt by that because she did want to be with her mom, but when she realized that her mom just didn't love her the way she wanted a mom to love her, she was okay with moving with me. So Elle wanted alimony. She didn't want my daughter, but she wanted alimony, and that got shut down. Elle is very capable of working. She has a bachelor's degree. She can very well get a job. The thing is, she just didn't want to work. She wanted me to pay for her to live with this affair partner. Are you kidding me? So what happened? Even though my daughter loved the home that we lived in, the judge made us sell the house and split everything. My daughter was hurt by that. The home she's always known most, now gone. Because her mother is greedy. We ended up selling the house, split everything. She moved in with her affair partner or did whatever she's doing and she's supposed to see my daughter on the weekends. In the beginning, it was fine. She'd come pick up my daughter and everything. That slowly stopped. Oh, I can't this weekend. We're going to Vegas. 
Oh, we're going to Orlando. It's his birthday. Oh, he has a family function. And it's kind of adults only. My daughter has accepted that her mother just doesn't want her. And she's okay with it. I ended up buying a condo, just a two-bedroom, for me and my daughter. Nice size, not too expensive. Still near my job, near my daughter's school, I wanted to keep her in the same school district. And things have been going swell for the past two years. I don't hear much from Elle at all. She doesn't call her daughter. Maybe Christmas or B-Day, and she'll drop off a gift. There'll be some times where she wants to see my daughter talk to my daughter, but it's so awkward. My daughter can't even have a conversation with her. It's like she doesn't know her anymore, and Elle would have the audacity to get upset with me. Why does she not love me anymore? What have you said to her? You lied to her. You told her I was cheating on you or something. I never told my daughter any of that. My daughter never asked why we were divorcing. She just knew that we weren't getting along. So all in all, I did not have to pay alimony. I didn't have to pay child support because I have my child, but I had to sell the house and we had to split everything. We didn't have joint accounts. What she had in her account is what she had and what I had is what I had and I kept. Guys, check this out though. You think my ex-wife Elle is paying any types of child support? Nope. So initially she quit her part-time job because she didn't want to pay child support. That was too much and she shouldn't have to. She just didn't want her daughter anymore. So sad guys. I tried going after her because she started doing Uber or DoorDash, something like that, but she was getting paid $10.99 somehow, someway. She was avoiding getting her taxes taken from her because she owed child support. I don't know how she's getting away with this, but guys, I got exhausted trying to figure out what she was doing and going after her. I don't need her, but I know it's not the fact that I don't need her. It's just that she needs to take care of her kid because if it was the other way around, I know if I did everything that she's doing right now to avoid child support, I'd probably be in jail without a license. I wouldn't be able to drive Uber. My ex-wife had a great life. We had a beautiful home. Everything was taken care of. She traded it all in to work a crappy job and be with another man. It still breaks my heart, but I got my girl, and I'm going to raise her to the best of my abilities and make sure she's good. I don't work as hard as I used to because now, you know, I have to be there for my daughter. I have to go to her games. I need to go to her practice and pick her up from school. A lot of times I work from home now, but men, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to leave you with this important thing. Don't get married. Wow, man. First, I want to say I'm glad you and your daughter are okay. I'm glad you guys are good. She abandoned her daughter, man, for a life that she thinks she wants. I don't know what this other guy provides better than you but clearly paying the bills and taking care of home and putting your family first isn't enough these days apparently that's not enough she was missing something else and that something else is something she wanted more than what you were providing that's sad not liking her own daughter you're helping her with homework take me out on a date she sounds like she just wanted to be single. He may not even be in a traditional relationship with this affair partner. They probably have an open situation. He does what he does. She does what she does. Nobody questions each other. That's who she truly was, man. And she pretended for so many years. You know, you ask the question, like, was she cheating on me before? She could have been. Or she might have just held it all in and just complained and complained, complained until she said, forget it. I know what I want. I know what's going to make me happy. And she cheated. It doesn't matter. You When you caught her cheating, you did what you were supposed to do. And dude, I hear you. When you say you just went into survival mode when you guys were getting into it and bickering back and forth, I get it. Hey, I'm going to try to save this marriage. Let me put up a fight first. I don't want to just throw my hands up. But I also hear the guys that say, nah, the first sign of anything, I'm out. <laughs> you know, I hear it because... It's like we hear so many stories 
okay, I know where this is going. She's eventually going to cheat if she's not cheating right now. You know what I mean? So I can, I hear both sides and I'm not mad at either side. I'm not mad at you guys. Someone saying, Hey, I'm going to try to fix this marriage first. And then eventually finds out she's cheating and then he has to divorce her or the guy that says, Oh, you're complaining. Oh, you don't want to work. Okay. Divorce. <laughs> I'm not mad at that because it's just going to get worse and worse, especially if you're in a situation where your wife is saying, I don't want to work anymore. I just want to sit at home and drink mimosas for brunch and things like that. And you say, no, I think we all know that eventually she's going to want to divorce you or she's going to cheat and try to find something that's going to uh, give her the life that she wants. I think we all know that. Once they start complaining, something's up. Something's wrong. She's either cheating or she's going to cheat. She's, or she's just going to leave you. Some women will just leave. They won't cheat. They'll just divorce. And in her case, she could have just done that and tried to get alimony like she was trying. Um, but, and that's so messed up too. I need alimony. So I'm supposed to pay for you to be hanging out with this new affair part? No way. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm sorry. I'm glad you got your daughter, but it's, see how you guys see the double standards there? She's not paying child support and she's driving Uber. She's either driving with a suspended license or they, they're not suspending her license because I know several men growing up that were in my family that missed some payments and got their license revoked or taken away temporarily or for some time. And they had to fight to get it back because maybe they lost a job, got laid off and they couldn't pay child support. They didn't care. You're a man. Go get that money. Your child needs you. But when it's a woman, mm, eh, she'll be okay. She has to take care of herself. It's not fair, man. It's really messed up. Guys, if you want to send in a story, send it to True Story Nation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's True Story Nation at gmail.com. I'm going to catch you guys at the next one.